Hi, this is Caroline from The Happy Sensitive. Um, I don't usually do this, but a, lo a, lot of, a lot of times if I get an email that's kind of hateful and kind of shitty, um, I, I deal with it, you know, personally, just behind the scenes and, and nobody ever hears about it. But I got this email from someone and it just, it's so sophisticated in its hatred and blame and everything that I thought it would be somewhat instructive to share this with you and to kind of go through this. Um, let's see, let's see what happens here. Um, I'm not sure entirely what I'm going to say about this. Um, that it, it just brings up so many different things and it does it in such a, almost like a, re not rehearsed, but in a way where you think, okay, this person's good at this. They've done this before. They have judged and blamed and attacked people in this way before. And that's, that's partly why I think it's, it's instructive to share it. Okay, so, hello Caroline, my name is Chuck. I am 45 years old and an empathic psychic. I have struggled my whole life up until six years ago, not knowing what I was. He talks a little bit about that. That's all normal, that's all fine. Um, uh, like you, over the course of a couple of years after discovering I was an empath, I did research only to find the same answers. Okay, so he's establishing rapport. He's like, I'm like you. I also did research. I also came to the same conclusions. Um, shielding and grounding, which neither worked for me and felt totally wrong. Today, I decided to try once more to do some research. Okay, so this is the guy on a mission and this is his final attempt. But the, the, the tone of the email is starting to change a little bit. We're like, what's, what's gonna happen here? Um, so he decided to try once more to do some research, mainly because of my failing relationship and the one thought that has been coming to mind for about eight months now. Because of this cursed gift, I don't belong in a relationship and need to be alone. Whoa, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so he's, he starts off like, you know, I'm, I'm, I've been looking at this for a while, didn't find shielding and grounding, doesn't feel helpful for me. But now it's like, because of this cursed gift. Like, okay, whew, breathe. Um, the more I open to someone and the deeper the connection, the more painful it is for me. Okay. Um, that can happen, right? So if, if we're empaths who are psychically sponging other people's stuff, of course, if you're in an intimate relationship, it's going to, it's going to go deeper than, than with random relationships. So, uh, that's, that is often one of the areas where problems can show up. Although... There are also empaths who have a very, very healthy relationship with a significant other, and so they don't really struggle in that area. Depends. Okay, anyway. So this is just his intro about who he is, and you know. And then he goes on, he says, and then I happened upon the happy sensitive. I read and read, read the program information. I said to myself, finally, someone gets it. Okay, so he's like, he's kind of saying like, me and him are in the same two peas in a pod, we came, we, we came from the same kind of questions, we came upon the same kind of information, we came to the same conclusion, right? Up, up until here, everything's still good, right? But something didn't feel right. I was getting that round, red, whirling light going around in my head. I think he means that one. Um, danger, danger. Then I got to the page where the form was, uh, where the form was to fill out. I immediately went to see the cost because that's the first thing you do. Thirteen hundred and sixty dollars, and I had to look this up because it's not that doesn't actually make sense U.S. dollars. Um, I think it was potentially New Zealand dollars. I don't know where this guy's from, so it's not U.S. dollars. It's a different dollar, which is worth less. That's more than I make in a month, and at that I was like. What? <laughs> um, okay, so I understand, like, I have a website. It's an international website, right? Um, people from all over the world can find my website. So, th of course, there are going to be pe people who find my site for whom what I charge would be more than they make per month. You know, and there are a lot of third world, world countries where what I charge is completely out of range for them. They could not get that money together. But here's the thing with rates, right? Like, I live in the Netherlands. I have to pay mortgage costs here. I have to buy groceries here. There's a lot of things I don't have. I don't have a car, for example, right? So there's a lot of costs that I don't have, but there's a lot of costs that I do have and I have to pay for them based on 
what things cost here, not based on what someone else in some other country can afford or what's reasonable for them. I'm not a big corporation. I don't have a sugar daddy. I don't have investors. I don't have people giving me money. So I, I make money through the people who are willing to pay for my services. That's, it's a very, very simple circuit, money circuit. Okay. So he's getting all offended and mad about it. And it's like, he's comparing it to what he's making and then what I should pay. But that's kind of, it's kind of irrelevant. Anyway, um, that's more than I make in a month. I can barely survive as it is. I was angry to say the least. I meditated and was still hurt. Then something my father says popped into my head. You have to be wealthy to be healthy. Whoa. <laughs> okay. So this guy goes from, we're on the same page. I understand. I agree with you. He's almost kind of like great minds think alike. You know, it's like, you know, you came to these con conclusions. I came to these conclusions too. Um, great. Great. Um, and, but okay, but here's, here's what I'm thinking. So uh, the program he's referring to is 900 euros, which in Dutch terms, 900 euros is a little bit more than you would get if you're living on welfare per month, right? But welfare is not a lot of money. That's, that's really, really very little money. So I agree with this guy. If he says he's, if he's making less than 900 euros a month, and of course I don't know exactly where he lives and what the living costs are there, but I'm assuming is gonna be significantly similar to what I would pay for things here. That means he is really, he's really, he really doesn't have much money at all, okay? Agreed, yes, he's, he's poor, he doesn't have much income. Um, but also he's 45, he's 45 and he's poor. Okay, so, um, he hasn't got that part of his life figured out very well. He's coping for whatever reasons, but you know, it's, it, there's, there's some issues there. Okay, so just, I'm not, I'm not saying that to be judgy, I'm just saying that for context for what's coming up. Um, here it comes. Right now, I work part-time as an online psychic. Okay, so this guy is a self, the way he describes, he says, I'm, you know, I'm super sensitive to energy and I take on, when you're, if you're an empath, you take on burdens from other people. So it means that doing any kind of psychic readings and stuff like that is also actually going to be pretty draining for you. One thing I always recommend if people are, if they are, if they have psychic abilities and they are not in control of them and it's draining and overwhelming them, then don't do any work that uses those abilities. Stay away from that for a while. Do something where you have other skills you can use or you don't have to use that many like advanced skills of any kind at all, um, right? I've, had, I've, I've spoken to people who sometimes would say like, okay, you know what? I'm gonna be, work as a barista for a while because it's something I can do, it's simple. I don't have to worry about any kind of energy problems that I have in other situations. And whatever work works for someone, it depends on the person, right? Someone else might say, oh, I can't be a barista because then I'll get totally overwhelmed. Okay. But the, the key is there's going to be jobs that are um, easier for your psychic senses and jobs that are harder. This guy is doing work that makes use of his abilities, but these are abilities he has no control over, right? He's stuck. He's calling them uh, a curse. So he's... He has something that he considers a curse and he's using that curse to make money. Now that's not a very good system in terms of stability and health and taking good care of yourself and, and, and all those things. So it's, it, that, that in itself is problematic, okay? Um, I would say if you can only work part-time with what you're doing now and you need more money, uh, do something temporary to get a little bit more cash coming in, right? Like get a paper route, seriously, just, deliver papers. I mean, it's not going to make a lot of money, but you can put all the money aside. You can save it up for a few months and then you'll have the money to do whatever it is that you want to do, which according to him was doing my program. Of course, at this point, I don't want to work with this guy, right? He's got a lot of issues. <laughs> don't want to work with him, but um, let's see. Okay. So right now I work part-time as an online psychic and I know I'm getting worse and my heart feels like a boulder filled with all this negative energy, the usual for me. Okay. Um, so, 
first of all, like, I feel bad for the people who hire him as a psychic. So he's doing work that's totally draining and burdening him, and he doesn't know what he's doing in lots of ways. Who knows what is happening in these his psychic energy readings, exchanges? Like, I kind of don't want to know. Um, that's not good. But then he says, I understand people have to make a living and have these material wants. Oh, okay, so he's kind of conflating everything. He's saying, uh, people ha understand how people have to make a living and have these material wants. It's like looking down on material stuff, right? And this is a, this is a problem I see in a lot of uh, spiritually minded people where they get kind of arrogant about, oh, I'm so spiritual, I don't need any money. Money is for stupid people. Money is for non-spiritual people. You shouldn't need this. But if you have such a negative attitude towards money and material belongings, belong, material belongings are also just like, a house and curtains and a chair to sit in. You know, it doesn't mean everything's plated in gold. It just means you have the things to support yourself, clothes to wear. Um, so he's really negative about that. He's like, oh, stupid material belongings. That kind of attitude is not going to help him get out of his poverty cycle. It's just going to keep him in it, right? So that's problem number one, okay? Problem number two follows where he talks about but if you make your program affordable to us poor people, you'd sell more in volume to make up the difference in pricing or at least come close. Oh, this guy is making a lot of assumptions or not even thinking this through at all, right? So he's saying, you just have to lower your price and then you get more people. Um, who says I can handle having more people to work with? Who says that is good for the people? Who says that is possible, right? So he's making a lot of assumptions. Um, when you when you go and you translate the work that goes into the program he's referring to, I, mean, I know there's people who work online, they have a program for others, and they're like, you know what, some people are poor, you can get a scholarship or something like that. Most of the time when people do that, it's a group program they have, or it's a do-it-yourself program. So they're not personally invested one-on-one. -on -one. So when they give you free or reduced cost access, it doesn't cost them anything in terms of time or efforts, okay? Yes, they, they could have made some more money if they didn't give it away, but honestly, you are the kind of person who didn't have the money for that anyway, so it's actually not costing them anything, okay? But the way I work with empaths is very much one-on-one. -on -one. So I work with somebody one-on-one, -on -one, um, four coaching calls, which are an hour each, Okay, and then there's time I spend making notes. There's time I spend answering questions over email. Um, there's a lot of hours that goes into this one-on-one -on -one for every person who does the program for me. So um, the 900 euros is not for just buying some download. Okay, this is, this is personalized attention you get from me during four months. And some people email me very little. Some people email me a lot. They email me like three, four times a week. And that's all part of it. And what's all part of it too is that some people need a little bit more time. They're a little, you know, they need a little bit more explanation. Other people are faster. But um, I'm not charging people on the minute. I'm not saying, well, your 50 minutes are up or something like that. And now we end it. No, I'm, I look at, okay, we need to do these things today to make sure you have the skills you need to continue and work on your own until next session. So, um, all that's calculated in, and I need to have a, a kind of a package rate where I can offer all this to people, offer that kind of time and support so they get the results they need, so they can actually, they're actually empowered and they can keep working with these skills I teach them on their own. They don't need them, they don't need me afterwards, right? Uh, so it's, it's a one-time investment. So, but this guy is making a lot of assumptions. He's like, you can just like take on lots of clients and just like, Pur. but the work I do is intense for me too. It's intense for my clients. It's intense for me. I can't just get twice as many people in my practice. And so what he's, the kind of things he's suggesting is like, you know, um, there's a lot of assumptions in what he's saying. It's like, well, of course you're, uh, you're not doing as, as much as you can in this area to make it easier for the rest of us. And the other thing, which is really funny actually, here's a guy who's struggling, who's not making ends, or is barely making ends meet, and here's giving me business advice. 
uh, dude, like, if you think you're so great at running a business, maybe you should start with improving your own and get it to a level where it's actually functional. And, and then you can see what, what advice you have to dole out to others. So it's very messed up, right? Um, the sad part is, and, oh yeah, and he ends with, thank you for understanding what empaths go through and good luck in your business. But he doesn't mean any of that. And what was really interesting in receiving the email and you know being sensitive to energy and being able to figure out what is what, this is what I teach people, um, it was interesting to notice that his, his, this email came up with a lot of negative emotions. It came, along with it came a lot of blame and resentment and judgment and all kinds of stuff, right? So now when I'm reading it, it's just a text. It's like, ah, oh, whatever. But when I initially received it, it was like this whole busload full of crap. It was like, here, Caroline, rah, rah, rah. Um, not good, not good, which makes me worry about his clients, like, you know, if that's how he deals with people, that's not good. Um, and he talks about us poor people, right? So it's an identity thing, like us poor people versus you rich people. Um, not a healthy thing to do. It's never, it's never healthy to say I am, I belong to this group which has this income level or something. Um, Either way, right? Because if you have a lot of money, you might, you could lose it. Things could happen. But also if you have little money, you could gain money. But the moment you say, I am this person who belongs in this price group, this is my identity, you keep yourself stuck there. And then if things, and then you're going to be resistant to change, right? And if you see yourself as a rich, if you're like, I am a rich person, this is my identity. Then if you lose money, you're going to, you're, you're going to be devastated. Um, instead of just dealing with the change and being like, okay, I have less money. What am I going to do now? You know, uh, but if you're a poor person and you're like, oh, this is my identity and those bad rich people, they don't understand, then you're not going to look for ways in which you can actually make some more money and things could be easier for you. You're going to reject that outright and be like, no, because I'm a poor person and other people have to understand and, and make allowances for that and help me out. Right. This is a very, um, victim -y kind of attitude to take. Um, which is very sad. The other, so the other sad thing was I noticed some things in how he interacted with me energetically in this little email exchange, um, which was one sided. I didn't, didn't write back. Um, I was really interesting is like, I think based on what he says here and how he responded energetically, I don't think he's actually an empath. He thinks he is, but I think what's going on with him is that he's energy sensitive. He has really bad boundaries. He um, doesn't deal with his own feelings very well. And you can actually get burdened and overwhelmed when you, you are not centered in your own self. And then you become very receptive to energies from others, but it's actually because you go and seek it out somehow. And I have a, I have a kit that explains how this works and what you can do about it. And it's only 20 euros. It's only 20 euros, right? So the irony is here. <laughs> this is a really messed up thing that this guy is, he's pretending to be in his own mind, I guess the good guy who's giving me advice on how I can be a nicer person, but he's doing it in such a condescending and arrogant and just messed up way that I'm like, uh, I don't even want to talk to you, right? So he's kind of shooting himself in the foot because if he had actually said, if he'd said to me, hey, Caroline, I saw your program. I really think this is what I need. I just don't have the money for it. What can I do? And if he had, you know, um, shown kind of sh given me a sense of, of who he is, uh, energetically, which he probably would have done anyway, because it's, it's how he interacts. I probably would have picked up on this anyway, or either way said, look, here's actually something you can start with, which is only 20 euros, only 20 euros. You know, how great is that? Um, see how far you get with it. And it ac actually could really help you out. Because what I noticed as he was emailing me was that he was really, um, it's a little bit hard to explain, but he was showing up in my space energetically. Okay. So when that happens, it means somebody's not centered in themselves. They're kind of flying around energetically. And because of that, they're picking up on stuff. And of course, doing that doesn't mean that you're not an empath. You could be an empath and do that as well. But in this case, based on everything, it's very likely that he's not an empath but he does fly around. That's the source of his overwhelm. He needs to be more centered in his body. He needs to practice staying put. 
um, and that 20 year old kid could is, is all that he needs right so um, the lesson if there's a lesson here is even if you're in a really bad situation you feel like there's nothing that can help me like this guy is like oh I'm a really bad situation this evil person has a program and it's too expensive and she doesn't understand poverty rah, 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 rah. Even then, it might be that the solution you need is right there and it's actually accessible. And if you think about it like that, if you, if you assume that whatever you need is actually within reach, you're gonna look at things in a whole different way. You're gonna be way more open to possibilities. You're gonna approach people differently. So things are gonna open up for you more than if you already start out assuming that you can't have what you want, Nobody cares about you. Nobody's reasonable. Everyone's out to get you, you know, and you have to fight your way through life. Because if you, if you have that attitude, you come across as attacking and aggressive and mean and, and just, you know, like, I, I don't know this person. I've never interacted with him. And the first thing, and this is what I get from him, which is like, thanks, Caroline, for putting all this free information out there. But you're an asshole because you charge more than I can afford. It doesn't make me an asshole just because he doesn't have you know, basically a normal income for someone his age, which is, yeah, sorry, you're 45 and you have less, yeah, so you make so little money that you can barely survive. That is not a healthy situation. You can't blame other people for that. Um, but, you know, like I said, like if he just approached it in a little bit of a different way, I would have said, hey, you know what? I actually think I have something which you can afford and it's only 20 euros and try it out. I could have, and even if it hadn't been the full solution, it would have gotten him started. As it is now, and this is, you know, the old me probably would have re reached out to him anyway and then gotten more hatred. The me now is like, this is plenty of shit from this guy. I don't need any more. I'm not going to contact him and get more shit from him. And I'm definitely not going to contact him and try to smooth thing things over or make him feel better. This is him doing his little dance. And if he's doing this little dance with me, he's gonna be doing it with lots of other people too. And that is a much bigger problem than anything he, he thinks is going on psychically, right? Whew. So, a lot of things. Um, but I wanted to make this video because it brings up so many themes around um, if, you, if you provide services for people, you are going to get people who tell you you're too expensive, I can't afford you, but I need your help. Or, and some people are going to be nice about it. Some people are going to be mean about it. Um, you're going to get criticism. Anything you do online, you're going to get criticism. But also, I wanted to make this video for other people who are like, I can't afford it and it's not fair. Or, or just like, I can't afford, can't afford it, what do I do? What if whatever that you need is actually available for you? What if your next step, maybe not all the steps you need, but what if the one next step that you need is somehow available? Either because it's not as big and bad and dramatic as you think it is, it might be within reach, or because there's a way, or I think this guy, there's gotta be a way he can make more money. But he's so dead set on blaming me for having more money and making me bad and making him right, right? Making me materialistic and bad. And he's like spiritual and good. That even if whatever options there are, he's not gonna see them. He's not gonna be open to them, right? So in this way, positive, like an honest attitude, but a positive attitude, a positive attitude doesn't mean you say, oh, I, I feel fine and everything's great. No, a positive attitude means that you're you're real, you're honest about what's going on, but then you're like, huh, okay, maybe this is not the end of the world. What can be done? Without blaming other people or trying to make it their problem or getting really mad at them or you know, saying that they're bad and I'm good. Because this guy in his own way was also doing a little bit of a, like a, creating a solution. Well, maybe if, I, maybe if I explain to Caroline there's poor people out there, cause she clearly doesn't know, uh, I can like make her uh, lower the price of her program and then I can get in anyway. And then I've like helped the world because I've done a good thing because I've made her lower the price of her program, right? So, and I think in his mind, he was like trying to put a positive spin on it, but it was like by making me the bad guy. If you do that, that is not a positive spin. That is not what that is. Putting a positive spin on it starts with maybe everything I need is already here somehow or already available somehow. Maybe there's something I can, maybe there's something I can do, right? Maybe there's some possibility I'm not seeing. What could that be? 
and keeping an open mind to that. Because how you think about things and how you see the world, how you decide to see the world, determines what you end up finding. It's like when you use Google. You know, you ever ever had a day when you try to find something, but you just you're so focused on the negative, you just can't find any positive solutions. Because all you th can think about is how whatever you're looking for is probably not there. And then you have a day where out of the blue, you're like, oh, maybe I'll just Google this. And then suddenly you find all this stuff that's super helpful. Google is a great example of how mindset influences what you find. Right? It's the same in our everyday life, because if you have a positive mindset, you, you're kind of like, you're like, oh, maybe something good can come out of this. Then you're going to talk to people in a different way. And because you talk to them in a different way, like you're noticing with me and this guy, I am like, I'm not interested in helping him because he has a shitty attitude and nothing I do is going to fix that anyway. So I'm just staying clear, right? I'm like, don't want anything to do with him. So he's shooting himself in the foot. And if, but he, if he'd approached it differently, I might've been like, oh, you know what? Let me see what I can do for how I can help this guy. And I know that sounds like blaming the victim because it's like, oh, but he's a victim. He has a right to be upset and blah, 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 blah. Yeah. But you know, if you're, if you're talking to someone that you don't know, you've never met them. And the first thing you do is kind of like bite their head off, whether you do it in an overt way or in more like a passive aggressive way, but that's what you're doing. You can't expect, you cannot expect to create goodwill. That's just how it is. Right. And you don't know what the other person's gone through. Maybe they had a really hard day. And then at the end of the day, you come and bite their head off over nothing they have done. And they're like, I don't deserve this. Get away from me. And rightly so. All right. So these are these little micro choices that you have. And especially when you're in a really difficult situation, those are such important choices to have. It's important to take those, take that power and use it wisely. Okay. I think that's what I wanted to say. I'm going to end the video here. Otherwise I'm just going to keep on babbling and adding more and overwhelming people. Um, <clears throat> I hope this was helpful to people out there. Have a really good day. Bye-bye.